Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining online. And also big thanks to the organizers for inviting me to give this talk for you today. As you might have guessed from the title already, my talk is going to be about microtubules, which are essentially the nanoscopic Swiss army knife of any eukaryotic cell. My name is Maxim, and I'm happy to share our recent research about the mechanical properties and energetic of, energetics of these astounding uh, nanomachines of the cell. Now, even before we could observe microtubules directly by eye, we knew that microtubules are very much not like any other structure in the cell. What captures the eye when we look at them is the marvel of their dynamicity and adaptability. That is something that is not frequently observed uh, for other biopolymers in general. Their dynamic behavior has become one of the central foundations of cell physiology. For example, it has allowed us uh, to develop explanations for how cells uh, search, capture, and divide their chromosomes during mitosis by pulling uh, them apart mechanically, or how cells develop polarized and asymmetric shapes and protrusions by basically pushing around cellular boundaries, or even how neurons can supply their axons with nutrition using microtubules as stable carbon tracks. And there are many more other ways the cell can employ microtubules, in fact. Now, structurally, microtubules are tiny migrant-sized hollow cylinders made of tubulin dimers. This feature makes them as rigid as plexiglass, but also allows this to, to, to stay largely dynamic uh, at, at their tips. And the tips are where all the magic actually happens. Now, microtubules grow by stacking GTP uh, bound tubulin dimers on top of one another and form uh, the so-called protofilaments, uh, protofilaments or these uh, long uh, tubulin uh, strands, which then connect laterally to form the tubular lattice. And the process of tubulin stacking at the tip has the consequence that it strongly accelerates the hydrolysis of GTP uh, to uh, GDP inside the microtubules and sometimes up to the point that microtubules become unstable, collapse abruptly, and shrink to zero length. It can be seen here nicely on this experimental camera. Now, this collapse is so fast and so directional that cells evolve mechanisms to extract mechanical work from this disassembly process. And one example here is the East than one kinetical complex that couples microtubules to chromosomes during mitosis. And it is thought the elastic energy transmitted to this complex by disassembling microtubules makes it slide toward the opposite end of the microtubule, producing a pulling force that acts directly on the chromosomes. Now, the traditional view of microtubule dynamics found in textbooks postulates that the ends of growing microtubules are blunt and straight, while those of shrinking microtubules are always strongly flared and therefore also substantially different in shape. Now, the shape difference is, the, to be precise, the change in the shape is believed to make them inconsistent with growth and also lead to catastrophe in the end. However, this widely prevalent textbook picture is accumulating more and more controversies in the recent years. And from the most recent highlights, uh, cryo-electron tomography studies have actually shown that the tips of growing and shrinking microtubules are strikingly similar and almost always flared. Now, this paradox is uh, raising rather old but fundamental questions in the microtubule community. Namely, if the shapes are so similar, how do microtubules know if they should grow or shrink at a given moment of time? Or even more, how can they choose between uh, pushing and pulling modes of operation if their tip structure is essentially the same? Well, now, unfortunately, microtubule tips are extremely transient structures, and their time resolved dynamics are not easily amenable to experiment at a high resolution. Now, because the dynamic information is hard to obtain experimentally, molecular dynamic simulations might be a uniquely suitable method to bridge the readout from static high-resolution structural data and the conformational dynamics of, uh, of tubulin oligomers at the tip. So to address this question, we used uh, atomistic molecular dynamic simulations in explicit solvent to, to investigate um, how this complex system behaves at microsecond timescales. Now, we started off uh, with accurate atomistic models of microtubule tips, comprising 14 protofilaments in circumference and being roughly uh, 60 nanometers in length, and performed relaxation simulations starting from these straight microtubule tip structures as shown here on the slide. Now, a great advantage of using such a setup to study the microtubule plus and dynamics is that all factors determining the microtubule stability as well as the kinetics of the splaying process can be assessed simultaneously in one molecular structure. 
Now, of course, we did not perform the simulations only once, but multiple times to gather statistics about the confirmations and interactions of individual protoformants on the PIP. And when analyzing the final structures, we found several interesting features of these uh, microtubule tip confirmations. Now, first, microtubule tips in which all protofilaments would be perfectly straight, like the textbook picture says, um, are highly unstable in our simulations. And it, it, it doesn't matter in which nucleotide uh, state the microtubules are currently, um, which is kind of consistent uh, with the cryo electron tomography data already. Now, second, the relaxation process has no obvious pattern. That means that microtubules can, in principle, crack open at almost any interface and then relax in, uh, in multiple possible ways. And third, individual protofilaments uh, always play in clusters, so they, they stick together, uh, sometimes in duplets, sometimes in uh, triplets, and so on. And these clusters seem to be structural intermediates that are no longer straight, like in the initial starting structure, but are still stabilized by lateral uh, interactions. But generally, it seems that all these shapes of the microtubule tips are always the result of a complex competition between the elasticity of individual protofilaments on the one hand, and on the other hand, the lateral interactions between them. And therefore, to get a, to get a deeper insight uh, into the tip stability, uh, we need to take a closer look at, um, at those components separately. Now, the first component of the microtubule tip stability, as I said before, is the dynamics of individual protofilaments at the microtubule tip and how they are regulated by the nucleotide state. As I mentioned before, also, uh, our large-scale microtubule simulations do not provide this information directly with the limited simulation time. Uh, to this end, we can see that a smaller subsystem consisting of only one short protofilament restrained at the microtubule uh, <clears throat> at the minus end and carried out multiple uh, molecular dynamic simulation of the system in both nucleotide states. Now, due to the stochastic nature of the simulations, they of course contain both slow conformational changes, which are of interest for us, and fast thermal vibrations. And therefore, we use the principal component analysis to extract those degrees of freedom that contribute most to the total atomic displacement in our simulations, so which is shown here on the right. Now, it turned out that only two modes um, are fully sufficient to uh, account for more than 90% of the uh, conformational dynamics of, in, in our protofilament simulations, with the first mode being a twist bending motion with a non-radial component, and with the second mode being a sort of tangential motion of the protofilament uh, perpendicular to the radial plane of the microtubule, um, and we call this uh, motion uh, sort of tangential uh, swing. Now, the principal uh, component modes uh, as such uh, are nice, provide only a um, provide a qualitative picture about the protofilament motions, but it would be also nice to have some energetic insights, right? And so to that end, let's now use the progress uh, along this um, uh, principal component modes as reaction coordinates and project all the simulations we have onto them. So if we do this for the GTP and GDP protofilaments simulations uh, separately, we can estimate the underlying free energy landscapes that guide these motions in our simulations. Now, because we know where the straight protofilament conformations and the relaxed protofilament conformations are exactly located on these uh, free energy profiles, we can estimate the energetic cost uh, required to form a straight uh, protofilament at the microtubule tip as a function of the nucleotide state. So if we do so, we then observe that the uh, that substantially more free energy is uh, required to form a straight GDP protofilament, uh, which correlates with previous experimental and computational studies, including our own. So we kind of knew that before. But what is more interesting is that not only the flexibility uh, seems to change upon GDP hydrolysis, so these two values, but also the um, dominant motions um, themselves. So basically, the way the protofilaments move uh, depending on the nucleotide state. So for example, uh, whereas for the GTP protofilament uh, system, we observe roughly a 50-50 distribution between the twist bending and swing component, this distribution shifts to roughly 70 to 20 percent uh, for the GDP uh, protofilament system, because the GDP uh, protofilament uh, seems to have a much higher rigidity, uh, tangential rigidity, so in this direction. 
So in other words, what it means for the entire marketable tip, that basically means that a GDP marketable tips would have it actually much harder, not only to form a straight uh, protofilament lattice because their uh, filaments are much more rigid, uh, their protofilaments are much more rigid, but also to form protofilament protofilament pairs, clusters, through spontaneous collisions with neighbors, if we assume that this tangential swing motion is exactly responsible for this type of lateral contact formation. Now, the second component of the microtubaltic stability is the lateral interaction between the protofilaments. Now, unlike the tendency of the protofilaments to twist, bend, and, and splay at the tip, the lateral interactions have a counterbalancing stabilization effect in the microtubal cluster. Now, to estimate the interaction free energies, uh, we performed accurate uh, umbrella assembling simulations using, again, a uh, reduced simplified uh, subsystem consisting of only two uh, straight protofilaments where we applied uh, an external potential to the center of mass difference of each timer pair in these protofilaments to mimic the effect of protofilaments playing in the microtubal tip. So what do we see there? Well, in both cases, we observed that um, the free energy raises steeply as we try to pull the protofilaments apart. So it makes sense that their native contact, they are stabilized this way. Uh, and also we observe that the rupture happens at uh, roughly the same uh, center of mass separation at around 6.5 nanometers. Fine, but what is more uh, uh, interesting is that the energy required to cause the protofilaments to disengage depends strongly on the nucleotide state. And in particular, the contact between GDP protofilaments is by almost seven kBT stronger um, than, the same system, than the same system in the GDP state. Now, this might already uh, uh, so, sound very counterintuitive, right? We know that pure GDP microtubules are more unstable, but on the other hand, they seem to have more stable uh, lateral contacts. So does it make sense? Well, such a statement is inconclusive without also considering the uh, viscoelastic uh, dynamics of this uh, protoformance at the tip and without taking together all energetic factors that are at play in the microtubule tip. Now, of course, our tip models, as I said before, are too large and too complex to obtain the full uh, free energy landscape of the system uh, to calculate it. But because we kind of know the elementary contributions uh, of uh, individual protofilaments to the total tip stability, because we calculate them, we could still try to get an idea of how this complex free energy landscape might look like. And to test this, we can Again, consider a simplified uh, subsystem consisting of only two uh, neighboring protofilaments at the plus and microtubule tip. So for example, these two guys here. And for convenience, we can also use the same collective uh, motions uh, of protofilaments uh, that I introduced uh, several slides uh, before. So in particular, uh, protofilaments can um, twist uh, band, so this would be this collective variable one, and they can also do this tangential swing motion, this would be the collective variable two in both cases. And the difference uh, in this tangential uh, swing parameter between the two protofilaments would then determine how likely it is that the two protofilaments come in contact and interact with each other, given some degree of the twist bending. So if we now take two copies of the simulated protofilament ensembles, place them next to each other according to the microtubule geometry, and then uh, reweigh <clears throat> their motions according to the lateral interaction uh, uh, energies from the previous slide, uh, and of course due to all, for all possible confirmation and, and pairs, uh, we would obtain the free energy landscape uh, for the motion of this uh, coupled double protofilament system. So if you actually do so and plot the reweighted uh, free energy landscapes uh, for each nucleotide state, so GDP and uh, GDP, uh, we can make some interesting conclusions already. So first, there is always at least two free energy minima corresponding to states with fully splayed uh, separated protofilaments, and also states with coupled, partially coupled cluster protofilaments. And in both cases, these states uh, uh, seem to be uh, separated by a um, uh, sort of free energy barrier located around here. But what is more interesting is that the bound nucleotide, so the nucleotide state, GDP or GDP, uh, seems to affect both the barrier heights uh, between these uh, two states and also the relative depth of this free energy minima. And interestingly, in this case, the GDP um, 
part of element system would kind of more easily cross the barrier back and forth, uh, meaning that the protofilament cluster in this case can quickly form and dissolve. But for the GDP uh, protofilament system, it becomes increasingly harder and harder to cross this barrier and also to populate this coupled uh, clustered state. Now, this already gives us some sort of idea how the uh, free energy landscape for the entire market utility might look like, namely as a complex multi-dimensional, well, 28-dimensional free energy landscape in this particular case, with one global uh, minimum corresponding to the fully split state uh, where all protoformats are separated, and then also numerous intermediate states uh, with uh, metastable protofilament clusters of different sizes. And then depending on the nucleotide state, these intermediate states may or may not be easily accessible. Now, in conclusion, I would like to summarize uh, the major findings of our work, which we believe uh, suggest a new mechanism of microtubule growth and catastrophe that does not require um, differences in the shapes of growing and shrinking uh, microtubule tips as postulated by the textbook um, uh, mechanism. Rather, this, this new model solely relies on the statistical mechanics of protofilament fluctuations and the formation of intermediate protofilament clusters. So first, regardless of whether microtubules grow or shrink, the tips stochastically alternate between states with fully splayed and separated protofilaments, states with metastable protofilament clusters, and states with uh, where all the protofilaments are perfectly straight. Now, these transitions uh, are very rapid, much faster than tubulin binding, unbinding, or even GTP hydrolysis, explaining why it is so hard actually for the experimentalists to observe these fluctuations at a high resolution. Now, second, the content, well, to be precise, the average content of GTP um, uh, tubulin at the marketable tip controls the probabilities of adopting uh, or one of those, uh, well, actually any of those uh, states uh, but not only that, also the uh, transition rates between the states, as we saw for the simplified double protofilament system in the previous slide. So in other words, uh, microtubules are on, in, this, in this model, in this formalism, are only able to grow as long as uh, their collective probability uh, to form uh, the straight lattice uh, is relatively high. And only if the transitions from this fully split state, uh, these metastable states are frequent enough so that new dimers can bind this straight structure, stabilize it and uh, elongate uh, the existing microtubules. Otherwise, this full structure is doomed to collapse. And so with this, finally, I would like to thank my lab and in particular Helma Grubmüller for making this work possible, but also Eva Nogales and her former PhD uh, from a postdoc, Rui Zhang, for kindly providing um, cryon data and uh, for useful discussions on uh, microtubule model construction, and of course you for your attention, and I would uh, be happy to take any of your questions.